Hi, this is uh, Dr. Mark Hitchcock. I want to welcome you to uh, Marking the End Times. Uh, this is a show that's designed to help you understand uh, the world we live in today. I'm um, in light of Bible prophecy. And uh, we all know there are a lot of things converging today uh, that, that make us believe and, and really uh, lead us to believe that uh, the coming of Jesus Christ uh, could be at any moment. And uh, what I want to do today is I want to talk to you about something that's really taken the world by storm, and that's artificial intelligence, especially something that's called chat GPT. You may have heard of that. You may have already used it. And what I want to talk about that and give you a lot of good information about this. This is really leading to, I think, a lot of the things that are predicted um, about the empire of the Antichrist. Uh, then when we uh, when we go into the subscriber section, I want to answer several questions about the rapture. Uh, one one question is, uh, you know, what happens if the rapture happens when I'm asleep at night? Um, another question is, is how does the rapture relate timing wise to the coming apostasy in Second Thessalonians uh, chapter two? And another question about the rapture in relationship to Revelation chapter four and the John there being caught up to heaven. So several questions about the rapture and, and the timing of the rapture. Uh, that we'll look at in, in the subscriber only section. Uh, but uh, for this, uh, for the for the main program here on marking the end times, I want to talk about uh, Chat GPT. Now, here's a, a couple of headlines I've read. One says, "What is Chat GPT and why does it matter?" Here's everything you need to know. Um, another uh, article, another uh, title says this: "Why everyone's obsessed with Chat GPT, a mind-blowing AI chatbot." Now, I'll kind of decipher what a lot of that means in case you're not familiar with this, but um, AI is artificial intelligence. Um, chat has to do just with, with talking or conversation, and the word bot refers to, to a robot, so it's an artificial intelligence chat or kind of voice or speaking uh, bot or, or robot. And GPT there stands for Generative pre-trained uh, transformer. So this is a chat GPT. Now, a lot of people ask, well, what is chat GPT? Well, let me read uh, from one of the articles I read what, how it's described. Chat GPT is a natural language processing tool driven by AI technology that allows you to have human-like conversations and much more with a chat bot. The language model can answer questions and assist you with tax, tasks such as composing emails, essays, and code. Usage is currently open to public free of charge because ChatGPT is in its research and feedback uh, collection phase. So it's, a, it's an artificial intelligence that will talk with you and carry on a conversation and can give all kinds of information. Now, interestingly, uh, Microsoft is hugely um, invested in this, or very invested is, is, is Microsoft. Um, Here's some of the things you can do. You can, you can ask it uh, to come up with creative holiday gift ideas for specific family members. Um, you can ask it about birthday gifts. You can ask this to explain physics. Here are a couple exam of examples uh, that were given. It says, uh, for example, you can ask it encyclopedia questions like explaining Newton's law of motion. Uh, you can tell it, write me a poem, and when it does, say, now make it more exciting and it'll make the, the poem more exciting. You can ask it to write a computer program that'll show you all the different ways you can arrange the letters of a word. So it'll answer questions, it'll write essays, um, it can write uh, computer programs. So it has advanced conversational abilities. Now, one of the things that they'll say on there is they give a warning that it may sometimes generate incorrect answers. And there's been some funny things put online about some of the wrong answers or false answers it's given. But their statement is, well, you know, after all, it's not omniscient. You know, it doesn't know everything. So some of the information um, on there could be wrong. But here's one that I thought was fascinating, what someone said. So when, when I ask it, is it easier to get a date by being sensitive or being tough? GPT responded in part. Some people may find a sensitive person more attractive and appealing, while others may be drawn to a tough and assertive individual. In general, being genuine and authentic in your interactions with others is likely to be more effective in getting a date than trying to fit a certain mold or persona. Well, that's a really good answer. Now, don't try to you know, be assertive if you're not or tough, or don't try to be sensitive if you're not, just be yourself. So some of these answers that are given are really amazing. I mean, it's, it's been said about this that, that the possibilities of this are endless. 
The possibilities are endless. Um, ChatGPT was created by OpenAI, an AI and research company, and it came online on uh, November 20th uh, of last year of 2022. Um, it's going to be available in March in China. And for what I've it's not available there now, but it's sending China into a frenzy. I mean, they, they can't wait for this. So the, the, it's, it's, it's going to really take China uh, by storm. Uh, one article I read has a, a little subheading. It says, how big a deal is ChatGPT? Well, a few days after its launch, more than a million people were trying it out. Uh, millions and millions of people now have gotten online and tried this out. Here's a couple of fascinating quotes by Elon Musk. Um, he actually was one of the co-founders of this company called OpenAI uh, before leaving. He said this, ChatGPT is scary good. We're not far from dangerously strong AI or artificial intelligence. Dangerously strong that's going to get into really some scary stuff. Um, another thing that Elon Musk said about this, this is fascinating to me. He said, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. Or some translations have the devil. We're summoning uh, the devil or summoning the demon. I think he's saying a lot more there than he realizes. Because this is going to be used by demonic forces in probably all kinds of ways uh, that we could never imagine. Many are saying that uh, this, this uh, uh, forum here is going to replace some jobs. Um, computer programmers uh, may not be needed anymore. This can, can, can program computers. Uh, they're, they're, they won't need people for media planning and buying. It will take that over. Actually, they're saying that um, some legal functions. Um, Chat GPT passed a law school exam. It also passed an MBA exam. So this, you know, th this technology is astounding in, in what it can do. Now, here's a, a fascinating thought about all this. One person wrote this. People are expressing concerns about AI chatbots replacing or atrophying human intelligence. For example, the chatbot can write an article on any topic efficiently, though not necessarily accurately, within seconds potentially eliminating the need for a human writer. The chatbot can also write an entire full essay within seconds, making it easier for students to avoid learning or to write properly. This has led to some school districts blocking access to it. Here's another thought. This is, this is astounding. In the next 25 years, AI will evolve to the point where it will know more on an intellectual level than any human being. Now listen to this. In the next 50 or 100 years, an AI might know more than the entire population of the planet put together. So I have an artificial intelligence bot here, a robot, that'll know more than all the combined knowledge of all the people uh, on Earth. So how do you access this? Well, you access it by simply, you visit chat.openai.com and you can create an open AI account. Anyone can go there and, and listen to this and ask these questions. So here's kind of the bottom line to this and what I've read. It says, so chat GPT is doubtless showing us the way toward our tech future. It's showing the way towards uh, the tech future uh, in, in the world. Now, there's all kinds of implications, I think, about this for, for prophecy and global control and the empire of the Antichrist. But one thing that came to mind to me when I read about this is in Revelation chapter 13. In Revelation 13, the first uh, 10 verses are about the coming Antichrist. But beginning in chapter 13, verse 11, we have another a beast here introduced, another uh, world leader, um, who's uh, the false prophet. And he's kind of the henchman, really, of the Antichrist. He's kind of the, the propaganda minister. Um, some have called him the Antichrist worship leader. But it says in Revelation 13, 11, I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast. The first beast here is the Antichrist. And he makes, all, he makes the earth and all who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. It's talking about uh, the death and resurrection of the Antichrist. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down out of heaven to the earth in the presence of men. So he's demonically energized and supernaturally empowered uh, to, do, to do miracles. And then it says, um, he deceives those who dwell on the earth because of the signs it was given to him to perform in the presence of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast 
who had the wound of the sword and has come to life. And it was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast would even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So in the end times, this second beast, its false prophet, he's going to have an image made of the Antichrist. And we know from places like 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that this image is going to be placed in a third rebuilt temple in Jerusalem in the Holy of Holies. And it's going to be an image of the Antichrist. And people all over the world are going to be called upon to worship that image. It's called uh, by Daniel, and it's later referred to by Jesus as the abomination of desolation. This is going to be part of the deception and delusion that's going to take place in the end times. And people are going to have to bow down to that image and worship that image and worship uh, the Antichrist. So it's going to be kind of like Daniel chapter 3. Remember, all the way back at the beginning of the times of the Gentiles, there was a Gentile king who demanded worship of an image. We get to the end of the times of the Gentiles, there's going to be a Gentile world ruler, the Antichrist, who's going to demand that everybody bow down to an image as well. And he says he's going to give breath to this image so that it will speak. Now, I don't think this is going to be sleight of hand or just technology. It's not going to be a, a, a bot but it's gonna be a true artificial intelligence that will actually be animated, it will be an animated statue. It doesn't say it gives it life, but it's given a breath. So again, this will be part of the supernatural power of the false prophet. But you see these bots today, these chat bots that can talk and have this artificial intelligence. Someday the Antichrist, the false prophet, are gonna have a, an artificial intelligence, a statue that's actually animated and can speak. So. What we see today is AI, it's artificial intelligence. This will be AI, this will be abomination of desolation intelligence that's coming. And what we're seeing in the world today, I think is a setup for people as they see these kinds of things. When this takes place, it's gonna go far beyond anything that man has ever imagined. And people have to worship that image or they'll be killed. That's where all of this um, ultimately, I think is headed. I'm gonna go